and finally, the third edition of How to Make Partner and Still Have a Life uh, has been published, and this has been the last year of my work. And actually, a lot of the book has been really updated to focus more on mindset. And one of the areas that we've really looked at is how do you set yourself goals on the way? in a meaningful way. And this is the this is the topic that we go into chapter six, which is about creating and writing your own career action plan. Now, in previous editions, we, we did the very methodical, systematic approach where you, you start with your big goal of I, I want to make partner. You then break it up into milestones and each of those milestones, you consider actions for what you need to do. And then you build these very detailed structure plans. That's nice in theory. But what we were getting feedback that that sort of very, very detailed only worked for some people. And for a lot of people, it got them very, very overwhelmed. Now, this matches up with actually the reality that traditional goal setting in the way that your firm or your practice tends to do is likely hindering you. Because let me explain a little bit more. For example, you know, two football teams both have a goal of winning the match. At, at, at the highest level, they've worked very hard, they've got the best team around them, but only one can win. You know, in that scenario, uh, having a goal of winning the match just doesn't work. Think about times where you've either maybe tried to lose weight or you've set yourself a big endurance task, such as running a marathon, um, you know, doing a 100k cycle ride, whatever it is, you know, losing three stone in weight and keeping it off. And think, how many times did you get to your goal or did even, didn't even get there because you gave up because it felt too big? <laughs> And when you got it, just went all whatever, you know, those three stone went back on within two years. You know, you, 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 you ran the marathon and then you not really put your running shoe on ever since. And all of those benefits that you had haven't been sustained. Um, and and, and that, is the, that is the reality. So what makes the difference? Well, the best way of looking at it is goals are great for short term, you know, for short term performance. What is also has to do it is actually the key thing here is that if you um, you rise to the level of goals, you fall to the level of your personal systems. So what do I mean by personal systems? Well, personal systems are your daily habits, your weekly habits, your monthly habits that you just do to underpin your best performance, to underpin the best sense of you. Now, the best thing about personal systems is finding one small thing that via a chain reaction is going to make you at your best. So for me, some of the things that really help, one small thing is once a week, clearing down my email and downloading everything I've got in my brain and starting to allocate it to days with my calendar in front of me. You know, that's one small thing, but there's a chain of things that help me do that. So what does that mean for you and your career? So first and foremost, I still believe that you need a plan because if you don't have a plan, well, basically anything can happen and actually the day job takes over. So what do you need to create that plan? And we talk about that in chapter six of the book. Well, the first of all, uh, as it links to chapter two, is you need that guiding direction. You need that purpose. You need what is my overall direction? Now, you may call it a big goal. That's fine. You may call it your purpose. You may call it what you're there to do. It might be your vision, but you need an overriding sense of direction. You know, for example, my overriding sense of direction is I love a challenge. I always have to be working on a challenge. And actually, it doesn't matter too much what that challenge is. As long as that's in alignment, I'm at my best. As soon as I get into business as usual, I get downhearted. It doesn't work for me. So the first thing to do, as talked about in chapter two, is really think about your overriding sense of direction. The next thing to do is just think about what is it I need to do in the next three months in order to move my career forward? Now, we talk about that as your one big focus in the book. What is your one big focus? So in the next three months, what do I need to do to move my career forward? What are the sort of the big things that I need to do in the next three months? And in the book, we talk about how to take that one big focus, how to put those more motivating short term goals in place, and then how to actually make sure that that one big focus then drives your actions over the next 90 days in order to move your career plan forward. So let me just restate that. 
you know, having a goal may work for you, but often it can lead to people being overwhelmed. What you need as per chapter two is that sense of direction, that sense of purpose, that driving force that is about what you're about and what really matters to you. Then you want to put a short term goal, which is a three month, one big focus. And in the book, we show you how to break that down so that you've always got and you're always feeling control. Now, this is, third edition has just been published. If you go to the comments, if you go to the, um, the, the description below, what you'll find is you'll find a discount code and a link to buy direct from the publisher so that you can get 20% off. Mm -hmm.